into the 13th days of Ramadan, inshallah. And uh, I hope uh, everybody is still healthy, still well. Uh, it's going to be another half of Ramadan. And inshallah, in less than or in two weeks' time, uh, we will celebrate together a beautiful occasion of the Eid al-Fitr, uh, most probably on the 10th of April, 2024. Um, my thanks goes go to uh, the Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia under uh, Ambassador Dr. Damas Dumoli Agusman and the staff. Uh, it's a beautiful occasion for all of us here to gather in this beautiful place and to wait for the iftar time, inshallah, and then we will make use of our time to gain knowledge or to share knowledge because I believe sharing is caring. So sharing, when we share, then we care. So we care to each other. Uh, my topic today is rather simple, but inshallah, uh, we may discuss further when there are questions afterwards. Uh, the topic is about Ramadan sharpens our social sensitivity and responsibility. Next, please. To go further. Yes. Can you go further? Ah, okay. Okay, good, good. So there is a there is a lack maybe. Yeah? Okay, um, I will recite one verse of uh, the Holy Quran in Al Anbiya, ayah number hundred and seven. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Wa ma arsalna ka illa rahmatan lil alamin. And we have not sent you, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, except as a mercy to the words. Accept as a mercy to the words. So the words here, uh, with plural, with the S, meaning that the seen word and also the unseen word. This is from the Holy Quran. And I believe uh, we as Muslims, living here in Austria or even anywhere else, we need to be a blessing to human beings. We need to be the mercy to the human beings, to the animals, to our environment, to everything that have crossed uh, upon us. And this is a very important message for all of us because then Allah said, we have not, or, or he has not sent you, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to the words, as a mercy to Al-Alamin in, in Arabic. And Ramadan, brothers and sisters, uh, honorable guests, Ramadan is a momentum for all of us, is a momentum for all of us to, to strengthen our social and humanitarian solidarity. So we are now in a very difficult situation when we see 
when we read the news, when we see, when we watch TV, we are in, in a very difficult situation now. Um, here in Europe, there's a war in Europe, in Ukraine, and also there's a conflict in the Middle East and in other parts of the world. So Ramadan is a momentum for us to strengthen social and humanitarian solidarity. It is very important to have the tolerance, to have the solidarity towards other people, towards other human beings. And the second one is to strengthen the religious bond, the bonding, the unity. We call it in our term, in uh, the Islamic term, uh, uh, Excellencies, Ukhuwa Islamiya, the religious bond. But also important that we strengthen the nation, the nation unity, or Ukhuwa Wataniya, the nation unity, Ukhuwa Wataniya, and the human unity, the Ukhuwa Insaniya, meaning that we need to have this bonding, we need to have this unity first internally with, within, within our religion, and then as a citizen of Indonesia or Malaysia, the nation unity, and also very important, very important human unity or Ohua in Sanya. Ramadan, brothers and sisters and honorable guests, is a month-long religious observance practiced by Muslim worldwide. So we show the unity that at that time, at the period at, uh, of time, that we restrain ourselves from eating, from drinking, from doing any other bad habits, which should follow after we uh, finish, after we finish with, the, with, uh, with fasting in, in the holy month of Ramadan. It is a time of fasting. But not only fasting, it is time of fasting, as well as prayer, self-reflection, self-contemplation, self-evaluation, self-assessment, and increased spirituality. One of the essential aspects of Ramadan is the cultivation of social empathy, it's very important, social empathy and responsibility towards others. Brothers and sisters, honorable guests, we are here very much privileged. We are here very much privileged. We sometimes we throw away bread, we throw away rice, we throw away our food. But on the other side, on the other part of the world, they don't have anything to eat. We can choose. We are very privileged. Today, inshallah, in maybe in one hour or so, we can choose whether we eat this or we eat that. But on the, on the other part of the world, the parents, they don't know. They have to select. They have to choose which child needs to be fed first because they don't have enough food. They don't have enough water. They don't, they don't have enough hygiene. So brothers and sisters, uh, fellow human beings, fellow um, uh, brothers and sisters, we need to contemplate about this. This time of the year, when we fast, we need to contemplate even, even more the situation around the world. So what we can do, we can donate and we can make our, our voice cease fire, no war, peace on earth. This is the message that we need to convey to outside world. This is very important. And we have to think about other people who are less fortunate than us, of, than all of us. So the purpose of fasting, brothers and sisters, the purpose of fasting for Muslims is to learn self-restraint from indulgence, indulgence, pemanjaan in our language, pemanjaan, in indulgence in every, everyday pleasures for self-discipline, to develop God consciousness. In our term, to develop the taqwa, untuk mengembangkan ketakwaan kita, God, God consciousness. To develop self-control, we need to have 
the self-control within us because we cannot go mad, we cannot give, go ballistic to uh, other people. To purify the body, to purify our heart, to purify our spirit, and to empathize with the poor and hungry. This is very important, brothers and sisters, in this time of the year. Sometimes we have abundance of wealth, and we are, we are not sure what we will do with our wealth, with our money, with our assets here and there. But then think that on the other part of the world, people are suffering. It is not only Palestine. It is not only Sudan. It is not only Yemen. It is not only Ukraine. It's, it can be Myanmar in our region, in Southeast Asia. So we, of course, we try to make peace and we try to think about peace for the future. Muslims describe a feeling of inner peace and tranquility because we need this tranquility within us. You know, with fasting, we are calmer. So we can control ourselves better. We don't need to think about food. We don't need to think about lunch. We don't need to think about other material things. This involves the, the inner peace and tranquility involves restraining anger, doing good deeds, exercising personal dis discipline, and preparing one to serve as a good Muslim and as a good person, as a good human being. We serve. Ramadan is about serving. So when you see why we gather here, all of us here, people will serve each other. You know, sharing food, you know, one may take the fruit from home, one may take snacks or finger food from home to share with others, to share with the people that maybe we don't know. But then this is the essence of Ramadan which is sharing. Uh, this paragraph I extracted from the Journal of Community Medical Health, and it is based on science that fasting is healthy for your body as well as for your mind. Because in each religion, there is fasting. In Christianity, there is fasting. In Judaism, there is fasting. In Buddhism, there is fasting. In each religion, there is fasting because the idea is to be content to yourself, to be content to the supreme being, to, the, to be content to Allah, to be content to God, the Almighty. So by, you know, by fasting, by trying to restrain yourself from eating or from doing some habits, that are not healthy for you, for, for physically, as well as mentally. Next one, please. So in Ramadan, brothers and sisters, in Ramadan, a fasting person should reach the full self-effectiveness and efficiency. The full self-effectiveness and self-efficiency. Because then, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not easy, I know. Because some people may say, ah, okay, you know, I'm fasting, so you know, I, my energy uh, level is low. Yeah? But yes, the energy level is low, but then your mind is sharp, and it's very important. I know the problem for me, personally, the pro sometimes the problem with fasting is not, not to consume the food, not to, cons not to drink water, but then the broken sleep. Because then we need to we need to get up early in the morning before the uh, before the uh, before the uh, sun uh, sunrise. So it can be like three o'clock. It can be like three fifteen. It can be like three three thirty. But then, brothers and sisters, this gives you a mental strength, and mental strength is very important nowadays when we talk about this new generation. You know, having difficulties. Because now, even in, in some offices, mental strength is very important. So basically, fasting is helping you with your mental strength and spirituality. <clears throat> um, 
self-effectiveness and self-efficiency because then with fasting, then you don't need to think about your lunch. You go to work with full energy. I mean, you know, normally I go, I try to be uh, in full energy mode coming to the office. So I don't need to think about my lunch. I don't need to think about my coffee break. I don't need to think or some other people don't need to think about the, the, the cigarette break or the break for snacks or the break for here and there. And also try to restraining yourself from gossiping, from, from backbiting, from agitation, from talking bad about other people. And this should, this should, this should be maintained throughout the year. During Ramadan, Muslims are encouraged to not only abstain from food and drink during daylight hours, but also to increase their acts of charity and goodwill towards others. It's very important. So that's why now it's the opportunity. When you think about it, when we think, aha, this is the hunger that we feel, that we are feeling right now. So imagine other people there, they haven't, they haven't seen bread, they haven't seen food for weeks, maybe for two weeks, maybe for three weeks. I saw a video, uh, you know, a, a person uh, distributing a, a loaf of bread to people. And then they said, I, we haven't eaten for, we haven't eaten bread for three weeks. So mainly they don't have, a, they, they staple food. So let's say we, we, we haven't eaten, we haven't eaten rice for four weeks for us. So it's very difficult. Now, think about it. Increase our acts of charity and goodwills towards others. This includes helping those in need, showing kindness and compassion, and being mindful of the struggles and challenges faced by others. Uh, brothers and sisters, honorable guests, um, I, I, will, I will recite a hadith uh, from narrated by Imam al-Bukhari, uh, one of the companions, Abdullah bin Abbas, anhu, anhuma, said the Prophet وسلم, was the most generous person. And he was even more generous in the month of Ramadan. When he met Jibril or Gibrail alayhi salam. Jibril met him every night to teach him the Quran. So uh, the Prophet Sallallahu used to recite the Quran during Ramadan every night in front of Jibreel alayhi salam. And the generosity of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi surpassed the blowing wind. Meaning, surpassed the blowing wind. It's very fast. Meaning that when he gets something in his hand, then he will give this away straight away. This is the level of generosity that he has shown us that we have to be aware of, especially in the holy month of Ramadan. It's very important to be generous because then this is the essence of Ramadan. Sharing, as I said, I will not be, I will repeat myself. Show, uh, sharing is caring. Indeed, Allah God Almighty is most giving, the most giving. He loves generosity and noble morals, and he hates bad morals. Narrated by Al Bayhaqi. There is also a hadith <clears throat> saying, Al Yadul Al Yadul Ulya Khairun min Al Yadil Sufla, Wal Yadul Ulya Al Munfiqatu Was Sulfa Was Sufla As Sa'ila. This, this we hear even in our language, in Bahasa, in Bahasa Indonesia or in Bahasa Melayu. The hand above is better than the hand underneath. The hand above is always better than the hand underneath. The hand above is the, uh, the one who gives and the hand underneath is the one who asks. This hadith is narrated by Imam Muslim. Brothers and sisters, the social empathy during Ramadan extends beyond the immediate 
community and includes global issues as well. Muslims and human beings are encouraged to be aware of and actively contribute to initiatives aimed at addressing poverty, hunger, and other social injustices. Human beings, Muslims, we should go hand in hand. We should go hand in hand to tackle the problem of poverty, the problem of hunger, and the problem of social injustices. This can be through volunteering, volunteering, donating to charitable organizations, or participating in community activities that support those in need. And Ramadan, brothers and sisters, also fosters a sense of community and togetherness. So it's not all the time that we can gather many of us here coming from different places in Vienna or maybe also outside of Vienna, coming here with one purpose, to break our fast, to do our, uh, to do our iftar, and to greet each other, to greet each other, to ask how you are, how you are doing, to ask each other. And this gives the sense of community, the sense of togetherness with families, friends, coming together for the meal to break the fast. And also, it is, it is also recommended that we perform the Taraweeh prayers. So we will go after Isha, normally after Isha prayers, uh, in the months, uh, not, not in the Ramadan months, so we normally go home. But then this time we have Taraweeh. We, you know, we, we pray together. We pray together an extra mile, an extra uh, deed uh, for Allah, for God the Almighty, by doing the Taraweeh prayers after the Salat al Isha. So basically, what I'm trying to say uh, uh, about the iftar is that we don't exaggerate. In, in in doing the iftar, you know, because normally some some people, you know, you know, they, they cook everything, you know, in abundance, you know, in abundance, you know, so many things. And then you eat, eat, and eat. You eat, eat, and eat until you cannot stand, until you cannot pray tarawih. So this is not the, ess the essence of, of Ramadan. The essence of Ramadan is to be humble, to be humble to yourself, to be humble towards others, to take what, what you can to drink, just, you know, in, to drink moderately, yeah? Not in excess, but then moderately you drink, moderately you eat so that you can perform many other good deeds after, after uh, 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 breaking your fast. So it is very important not to do this in ex exaggeration because any exaggeration is not good. Any exaggeration what that we are doing is not good. It's not good for us. It's not good for the environment. It's not good for other uh, uh, creation of, of, of God. The social aspect of Ramadan further re, re, on, re, reinforces the importance of empathy and responsibility towards others. Overall, Ramadan serves as a month of self-discipline, discipline everybody, spiritual growth, pengembangan spiritual, and increase social responsibility. It encourages individuals to develop a greater sense of compassion and re responsibility towards others, both within their immediate communities and on a broader global scale. Through acts of kindness, charity, and goodwill, Muslims and also other human beings aim to make a positive impact, promote social justice, and foster a sense of unity and solidarity during the sacred month of Ramadan. Sense of unity as human being, sense of uh, humanity, uh, 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 humanity as a uh, nation, and sense of humanity, humanity within, within the religion. The communal aspect of Ramadan further enhances social sensitivity. Muslims come together to break their fast, share meals, and participate, participate in special prayers and gatherings. 
spending time with each other. You know, so when when we when when you get up at three or three thirty at night, then you start talking to other family members because sometimes with all our busy schedules, sometimes we don't have time uh, uh, for for our family member. In this occasion, in the sahur, when you get up, so you talk to each other. When you break your fast after the sunset, then you talk to each other. So basically, it brings us closer to each other. And this is the essence of Ramadan. In summary, brothers and sisters, Ramadan sharpens our social sensi sensitivity by creating personal experiences of deprivation, self-restraint, encouraging acts of charity and kindness, promoting forgiveness and reconciliation, it's very important, and fostering a sense of community. These, element, these elements work together to cultivate a, a, a deeper understanding of other struggles and needs and inspire actions that contribute to creating a more empathetic and compassionate society. So, before I end this, a short uh, presentation. There are three characteristics which are expected to emerge from the spiritual Ramadan lessons. There are three characteristics. First is the strong devotion to God. The strong dev devotion to God. So we have our link, direct link to God. So we have this strong bond. We have this strong link to God also known as God consciousness, also known as taqwa. So the vision for the afterlife. And the second characteristic, not too dependent on this world, not too dependent on the material things, material things. Sometimes, you know, you, uh, you, are, you are proud of what you have achieved. I have, you know, I have this, I have that, I have this car. I have this house, I have this asset, I have land, you know, but they will, they will be gone or we will leave them eventually, anytime. You know, when we leave this world, then we will leave all our assets. We leave our achievements. We leave our ranks here and there. So not to depend on this world. The, the main trait, the main, the main, and the strong characteristic is not to giving up easily by not to, de to be dependent on this word. And the third characteristic is the winner's mentality. When you have the winner's mentality, when you are always optimistic, when you are always hardworking, no matter whether your boss sees you or not, you are still hard, you are still working hard, then this is the, the winner's mentality that we would gain from doing the fasting, from observing the fasting, the way that our religion, our, uh, our, our God uh, 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 tells us to do. So strong devotion to God, not to be very dependent on this word and the winner mentality, the winner's mentality. These are the characteristics that are expected to emerge from the spiritual Ramadan lessons. How much time do uh, I have? Uh, four minutes. Uh, four minutes, okay. The uh, discussion, okay, good, good. I hope uh, there will be no uh, hard questions afterwards <laughs> because I try to explain everything. So, uh, uh, but other people may also uh, uh, involve in the discussion. Before I end my short presentation. Welcome Dr. Huda and uh, Professor uh, Martin Slam. Um, I, I quote this uh, from uh, Alexander van der Bellen, the president of the Republic of Austria. He always greets um, the Muslims uh, at the start of the, of, of the Ramadan, of the holy month of Ramadan. He said in German, zum Beginn des Fastenmonats Ramadan wünsche ich allen Musliminnen and Muslimen wertvolle Momente des Innenhaltens, Innenhaltens und ein friedvolles Miteinander. Der Frieden hier in Österreich ist, ist etwas, für das wir dankbar sein können, auf das wir sehr stolz 
sein können. Ramadan Mubarak from Alexander van der Bellen. In English, freely translated, at the beginning of the holy month of Ramadan, he, or I, in this case, uh, uh, Alexander van der Bellen, I wish all the Muslims valuable moments, moments of short pause and peaceful coexistence. The peace here in Austria is what we should always be thankful and proud of. So basically, what uh, what strikes my eyes is the short pause, the, sh the inhalten. The inhalten meaning that, okay, now you don't drink, now you don't eat, now do you don't do your usual things during the day. So, and this is good because then when you do everything repeatedly and uh, in exaggeration, then it is not good for your health. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, we have to, we have to consume we have to consume our food and our drink in moderate way. This is the idea of inhalten and short pause. So the peace here in Austria is what we should always be thankful and proud of. So uh, it is very, it is very true. It is very true because then we have here peace in Austria. Welcome, Imam. Salamu alaikum. Yeah. Uh, the peace here in Austria is what we should always be thankful and proud of. So basically, the peace here, which is given by God Almighty, is what we need to be thankful, what we need to be proud of. Because then if there is war, then we will be panicking. We will be anxious, you know. Something happened, something, I mean, something happened still in, in Ukraine, then we are already panicking, you know, because we know, okay, Slovakia and then Ukraine. So it's 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 not far away. It's not from far away from. Yeah, but then you know the peace here in Austria is what we, what we should always be thankful and proud of. And with this, I thank you very much uh, for your kind attention. Uh, and uh, we will discuss if there is anything which is which needs to be discussed. Otherwise, then we will go uh, with other programs uh, for this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, subhanallah. Thank you, uh, Ustaz Dacha. Uh, subhanallah. Uh, we already given our uh, thoughts about uh, Ramadan to sharpen our social uh, our uh, social spirits. Uh, as Ustaz uh, Andi Ahmad Junir has said, uh, we as Muslims uh, should be a mercy. Uh, for every was for for humans uh, for animals uh, for everyone and uh, for every uh, for environment also and ramadans also uh, is a month uh, we can reflect ourselves as a self uh, contemplation and cultivation for uh, social empathy uh, ramadan also is about serving uh, and also, this is one of the interesting, uh, especially if we uh, back to Indonesia. Uh, Ramadans build us uh, the mental strength, our mental strength, because as we know, probably back in Indonesia, uh, youth Muslim Ustad, it's quite uh, having a mental issue, uh, so it's quite be an issue back in Indonesia nowadays. Uh, so probably, uh, hopefully, in this Ramadan. Uh, can bring uh, our new generation, our new Muslim generation, a proper, a better uh, mental strength. Uh, and also, uh, three characteristics are expected to emerge. Uh, the first one, of course, is uh, taqwa, as the uh, impact or the uh, aims of uh, Asiam or uh, Saum Ramadan. It's uh, God consciousness. We know what is right, what is wrong for us. Uh, and also not uh, giving up easily, uh, and not too dependent to the world, and also the winner's mentality. Uh, thank you, Sad, for the uh, knowledge. And uh, if there is any discussion from brothers and sisters here, we open uh, one session with uh, two or three uh, questions. Please raise your hand. In Indonesia, is. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking with Indonesian. Pakai bahasa Indonesia juga boleh, Bapak Ibu. Silakan jika ada yang mau ditanyakan atau ada yang mau didiskusikan.
dari apa yang sudah disampaikan oleh Al Ustad uh, Andi Ahmad Jisa atau Ustad Aca, silakan. Kalau tidak ada mungkin uh, dari saya Ustad ini untuk trigger saja mungkin satu uh, pertanyaan from me Ustad. Uh, so yesterday I've been uh, I have a discussion with a Muslim from uh, Egypt. Uh, so me and uh, Ustad Arfi, we have a chat or a discussion with a Muslim from uh, Egypt and Pakistan. And the one interesting thing is about the collaboration and the cooperation for a Muslim community. And the issue here is the uh, why, uh, because Muslim community in Austria also is quite big, uh, from every country is quite big. So why we cannot make something uh, big, something bold? I mean, uh, we separated by communities. Uh, that's what our brother from uh, Egypt said. That, and uh, one of the trigger is about the culture. It's a different culture. So. Uh, he said that we put culture in front of Islam. So what do you think about that? Is that, uh, is that a true or how we can, uh, in, in Ramadan, we can strengthen uh, the collaboration between Muslim in Austria? Thank you so much. Uh, I believe uh, culture and uh, religion should go hand in hand. So basically, you don't need to contradict each other. Um, it's And it's not worth it. You know, because um, I would say uh, even um, I I I I remember uh, Wapena. I think five or six or seven years ago. I I cannot remember anymore. That that time we organized a cultural evening. You know, uh, for about Indonesia, about our culture, uh, and also uh, about the religion, uh, which can go hand in hand. So uh, basically, uh, the the feeling of unity is required, of course. But then, uh, at the end of the day, uh, we cannot agree on everything. We cannot agree on everything. Basically, uh, you know, Muslims from Indonesia, Muslims from Egypt, Muslims from Syria, maybe, you know, we can get together, we can agree on something, and we can also disagree. Yeah. Yeah, so we can agree to disagree. Basically, but of course, uh, in a principle, uh, on principle matters, that we need to agree with each other. I mean, we need to be in consensus. Like, when is the first of Ramadan? It is very important. So we have to be united. When is the first of Shawwal? We have to be united because we are, we are citizens or we are people, uh, we are community who live in Austria, who live in certain country. So we have to, we have to see, uh, although we come from different background, but then we need to agree on some things, but then also we can disagree on, on other things as well. So we cannot, we cannot make ourselves in agreement for everything. Basically, this is, uh, this is almost impossible. So let, let us be different, but then on certain principle matters, then we need to be united because this gives you uh, the the feeling of tranquility you know when you when you talk about when is the first of ramadan and then one community said aha it's going to be tomorrow the other the other part will say aha it's going to be the day after tomorrow so and then they discuss they, they you know they have the argumentation which you know which not we will will not finish uh, on the uh, you know at the end of the day so uh, nobody will gain but on principal matters, then they have to agree. But then on small things, on things that you know we can disagree, then we, we should disagree. And the, the most important thing is that we respect each other. Because then I can disagree with you, but then I should also respect what you have come out with your ideas. I, I, hope, I hope this explains. Yeah. Uh, if not, then then we have Professor Slama here. We have <laughs> we have Imam uh, from IGGO also here. You know, so they are very much experienced, and we also have our honorable guest here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Isad. Uh, is there any probably one more question? Uh, we still have a time for one more question, please. Or comments or, comments or remarks, probably. Oh.
Who's it? Nobody else? Okay. Um, thank you very much. And of course, um, thank you to our Wapena Imam for, for giving us uh, a little enlightenment um, about the meaning of like fasting. And I would like to highlight a little bit uh, when you mentioned about um, mental, uh, you know, state of mind, it, fasting is actually helping us. Um, it's it's just I don't know if it's like has something to do with like being grateful sometimes you mentioned like there are people sometimes we took things for, for granted there are people who's hunger and like who is in a crisis and conflicts where they don't have access to basic necessities and and for that uh, sometimes as well I think um, dealing with mental illness um, has something to do with being grateful and being a, a human being in general. We sometimes forget uh, how grateful we are, not only because we can have all these privilege to basic necessities and even more. And sometimes being a human being, we sometimes forget about, you know, just to wake up and to be able to wake up in the morning and God has given us another day of uh, to be alive again and like breathe again in the morning and start our activities. And sometimes we only being grateful to God when we have something extra, like maybe uh, like a bonus at work or promotions. Uh, what do you think other than fasting, um, you know, in Islam that could actually help? Like some people also think that reciting Quran is also, um, you know, giving them peaceful of mind. And it's, it's sort of like, meditations and um, I would like to you know ask you to kind of like a little bit elaborate on the connections of the mental illness thank you thank you uh, thank you for the question uh, it's very important question and uh, nowadays um, this mental health issue is everywhere you know, when, when we see in, in some offices, they have this uh, counselor for mental health, and it's very important. And the religion needs to be one of the solutions for this problematic uh, issue. Uh, because mental health, when you, you know, uh, sometimes here, if you if you think that that you are being alone and you don't have any help and you don't you don't have any contacts with uh, outside world, then you can be de depressed. But when we think, we all here, all of us here, we 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 trust and we believe in supreme being, that somebody up there is watching us, is always with us. This gives us the mental strength, I believe. You know, fasting is an excellent exercise for this mental strength because, you know, because I, I feel, you know, I, you know, when, when I concentrate, I focus, I don't need to think about my snacks, my coffee, uh, you know, my coffee or, or my tea. Yeah. Then I focus, then it gives you the, the sharper mind to solve the problems, to solve issues. Yeah. Also charity. When, when when you think about it, when you, you said you said it well, because then you know we have you know we have enough money we have enough money in our pocket, and sometimes we don't know what to do with that money. Uh, you know to donate for a good purpose, for a humanitarian call, and it gives you a satisfaction in your heart, because then ah okay I. At least I do something, which it, which is my, maybe tiny, which is maybe very small, but then still I try to help other people who are in uh, who are not in a, a good position as as we as we are here. So meaning that the charity, even you know um, the, the the fasting, coming together, gather here like 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 this now gives you a mental health you know the problem now in modern society you know they you know they think they want to have the instant solutions to their problems 
And then when they are stuck, they try to, you know, go other way, you know, either taking drugs or, you know, or doing this and that, uh, which are not correct. So basically the religion and also the other religions I, 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 I trust is the same, is to give you the mental strength for you, for, required for you to live in this world, to be content to yourself. You know, because then, uh, you know, in in when 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 you go to the office, uh, you know the, the the work is never is never done, yeah. So you try to achieve something today, so by today evening, many other things come up and piling uh, uh, on top of your head, yeah. But then with this mental strength, you know that okay, good that I did my best for today and i have the contentment that i i have the contentment that i did everything correctly and tomorrow is another day and we see the other, we see tomorrow as a new day with the optimistic approach and this gives you the mental strength and religion uh, gives um, gives you uh, a lot of um, solution to this by having you know like okay so we are hungry now okay we think about others uh, and then we give charity, we go uh, for Hajj or for Umrah, where we see the amazing outside world that we see, ah, okay, many people are like us. And, you know, they, they, they come here in unity as a solid solidarity to be, to be worshipping, uh, to be worshipping the God uh, in, you know, in, in the particular pilgrimage uh, 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 place. So uh, basically, I, I think um, it is very important uh, to follow what we have been asked to, uh, to do uh, and to follow this properly in order to have the mental strength and not to be uh, dissatisfied with some things that might come uh, uh, into your way. So be patient, be content. Kona'a, in, in our religion, we say kona'a, be content and be happy with what we have achieved. And then we see next day as a new day with the op optimistic approach uh, that we can, you know, we can, uh, we can solve the, the issues uh, uh, coming to us. I think that uh, the humble uh, reply responds to your, to your question. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, um, Siko and uh, Sadacha. Uh, because the time is uh, running low before we uh, iftar. Uh, again, uh, I'm sorry, I cannot afford any other uh, discussion. If there is any uh, any more discussion, probably uh, after uh, this program finish, we can do a more discussion contacting directly to uh, Ustad. Ustad Andi Ahmad Junisa. Uh, Ustad, thank you so much. Sukron uh, Kathiron. Uh, uh, and for the brothers and sisters also, thank you so much. Uh, we will go into the next uh, program. So my job here is also is done. Uh, so thank you so much. I'm sorry for if there is any mistake uh, when we have this discussion and we have this uh, sermon. Uh, uh, thank you so much and uh, the floors I'm giving back to the master ceremony thank you so much Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh thank you very much uh, moderator Ahmad Baidlowi and uh, of course I would also like to welcome Mr. Ermin Sehik the first imam of the Islamic religious community for Vienna representing IGGGO and of course welcome uh Wisnu Arfian uh, Sujarwo, the chairman of the Indonesian Muslim community in Vienna. And with that being said, we are moving on to our next program. I would like to invite the ambassador of the Republic of Indonesia, Damos Dumolia Guzman, to deliver his um, remarks. The floor is yours, Excellency. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'm not going to compete uh, Ustad uh, Andi here. I just want to make a kind of a short welcome uh, to you. 
first of all, uh, we are very happy and we are very proud and praise God Almighty for giving us the opportunity uh, to be gathering here. I'm so happy that we are coming from not only uh, many places but also many nationalities and we are ha having different culture uh, different language but for sure we have uh, a same exactly same time when the fasting will be break yeah <laughs> right um, first of all uh, welcome to uh, the embassy and i thank you pa ikram uh, ambassador of uh, Malaysia that you will be with me and also Imam Emir Sehik uh, from IGGO thank you very much uh, for your presence here and also we have here Ketua uh, Wapena so we have here uh, uh, Indonesian mosque uh, Ambassador Ikram I think you have already been there uh, we call it uh, Masjid As, uh, As Salam uh, and they have already organized everything then this iftar uh, tonight is a collaboration between embassy and and wapena so uh, we have a very uh, good cooperation of course and i'm very proud to announce to you that uh, masjid asalam As is very active organization here uh, imam Arab, uh, under your supervision of course uh, i'm looking forward <laughs> to make the the masjid uh, become growing and growing uh, to serve the people uh, in order to the objective uh, mentioned by Ustad Andi about social sensitivity and uh, social responsibility. I like also to, uh, I recognize here, identify Professor Slama. Professor Slama is also, uh, is Austrian but Indonesian, is, I think, yeah. He love, he love Indonesian and of course he love Austria, but emotionally he love Indonesia. <laughs> right, uh, thank you Professor Slama for uh, helping with with us here and uh, I don't want to miss uh, to mention uh, Dr. Uh, Ibu Huda Ibu Ibu Huda ya yeah. uh, Ibu Huda uh, is uh, from the Institute of Islamic uh, Theological Studies University of Vienna so she is more competent on telling us uh, academically <laughs> about the teaching ya yeah. right uh, I know that uh, we are nearly going to the to the uh, fasting the break so i wish all of you uh, have a successful in this ramadan and being blessed and of course uh, the words and the teaching that ustad already uh, telling us is a very good it's very important because today we are facing a number of humanitarian catastrophe and we have also in the middle of uncertainty of the world order. So the teaching of uh, Ustad is very relevant for us to uh, at least to contemplate ourselves uh, how to deal with that. And this Ramadan, of course, become very relevant and a strong uh, courage for us to deal and face all the challenges that, that, that we have now. So uh, wish you the best uh, for the Ramadan and I hope that everything will finish in the uh, finishing line very smoothly. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. And with that being said, uh, I would just like to make a little announcement that uh, we will have, inshallah, iftar at 18.18. Uh, 18. So uh, we will continue again, and the program for today is we will break our iftar, and uh, we would like uh, for the Muslim, because we also have like non-Muslim community attending at the moment uh, for the iftar, and um, I would like to invite everyone to come back for Maghrib prayer, and it will be by 18. 30 between 18:30 and 18:45 so we will break our fasting we will pray maghrib and later on we will have the full meal of indonesian cuisine thank you very much assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh
saya umumin aja ya. Uh, Bapak Ibu yang berpuasa mungkin bisa tidak harus di dalam ruangan. Kita bisa masing-masing udah mulai ngambil tajilnya. Jadi di saat berbuka kita bersama-sama semuanya memulai buka puasa. Jadi uh, kita bisa keluar tidak harus menunggu dalam ruangan. Tapi kalau mau nunggu di dalam ruang Nusantara juga bisa. Baik, terima kasih. Tujuan transfer Indonesia Islamic Ferein uh, di Bank Austria dengan nomor IBAN AT14 1200-0513-8210-6601. Dan Bapak Ibu yang akan uh, bersodako atau melakukan ZIS, mohon mencantumkan keterangan transfer sesuai kategori dana. Yaitu ada dana operasional masjid, saya ulang kembali, dana ZIS, dan dana kegiatan Ramadan. Bapak Ibu juga kami menerima zakat, pembayaran zakat dan vidya. Untuk Bapak Ibu yang akan membayar zakat dan vidya, silakan untuk mencantumkan keterangan transfer. Begitu. Untuk biaya zakat fitrah itu adalah 10 euro per orang dan untuk vidya itu juga 10 euro per orang per hari. Jadi untuk zakat fitrah 10 euro dan untuk uh, vidya itu adalah 10 euro per orang per hari tidak puasa. Begitu ya Bapak Ibu. Uh, sekali lagi rekening tujuannya adalah Indonesia Islamic Ferein di Bank Austria dengan nomor IBAN tertera. Atau bisa mengontak langsung kepada uh, tim dari WAPENA jika akan. Selanjutnya adalah agenda kajian Bapak Ibu yang akan dilaksanakan uh, besok hari Selasa di Masjid Dua Pena dengan tema menjembatani kajian entitas dan nasionalisme pelajaran dari studi di perbatasan oh, sebentar. baik uh, jadi ini adalah uh, Insya Allah hari Selasa besok di Masjid Dua Pena Asalam uh, di Rasa Serasa juga akan ada Kegiatan buka bersama, Bapak Ibu dan juga kajian sebelum berbuka dengan tema menjembatani kajian etnisitas dan nasionalisme. Pelajaran dari studi di perbatasan Kalimantan Barat dan Sarawak yang akan disampaikan oleh tim dari Wapena sendiri dari Asalam Leadership, begitu yang disampaikan oleh nanti Al Ustad uh, Adityo Darmawan Sudagung. Jadi bagi Bapak Ibu yang hari Selasa ada kelowongan waktu. Bisa datang ke Masjid Dua Pena mulai pukul uh, 17 CET uh, untuk mengikuti kajian sebelum berbuka dan berbuka puasa bersama di Masjid Dua Pena. Terima kasih Bapak-Ibu. Sekian pengumumannya. Uh, selamat menyiapkan berbuka. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.